So may I welcome you all and say what a great morning it is and get a few of you jealous besides Frank and I. We're looking over the Mersey, Frank yeah. from one aspect of the, uh, of the sea and me from another aspect of it. But it is absolutely gorgeous here. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it's brilliant. Okay, so uh, I'd like to try and bring a little structure into what we're doing. We've had plenty of time to sort of get to know each other so far, but we want to try and develop a little more structure. And one of the things that Wayne and I did talk about the other day uh, was going to be each one of us can do a little 10 minute talk over the weeks with regard to what we're doing, our feelings, the way from it. Yeah, sure. Um, and again, just the, uh, the reason for this is, you know, as we originally set this up, the idea was that we all benefit in some way by sharing information and motivation, but also for our audience members, you know, to be able to walk away with something actionable, you know, some form of strategies that they can go and implement. What happened to Mona? Oh, I'm right here. Right, right, okay. Did I, did I disappear? You did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Could I ask you just to uh, mute your mics as well, please? You don't, you don't want to hear us heckling you, Wayne, no? That's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, specifically for this, I'm going to be putting it on, uh, on my channel as well, and I'll splice it in so that... You guys get all of it. Right, so if I use my business as an example, most of the things that I do, and certainly started, was with the live training. Now, not every organization, of course, has live training. So, if, like I use the example, whether it's an accountant or it's a, a hairdresser, they might not have live trainings available at the moment. So it doesn't matter whether you go this way or you go that way is irrelevant. The same concept and the same strategies can be implemented. What it really starts with is content. So what is your content? What are you delivering to your client? So me specifically with the NLP training, I've got the live course. The live course is £1,200 for the seven day training. However, not everybody can A, afford to come to the training or two maybe they're in a different country and so again if we just use pounds as an example somebody in a village in a small little village uh, in India somewhere might not have the resources to be able to come to the live training so what we do is we record the live training and I can also give a online training so the same content just delivered in a slightly different way Right. Now, the other part of my business is working one-to-one -one with clients. And so here, specifically if I use coaches as an example, there's some coaches, when they first become coaches, they say, you know what, they want to, uh, they want to make £5,000 a month and they want to charge £50 per hour. Of course, that's ridiculous because you're going to have to see a tremendous amount of people to be making £5,000 a month at £50 an hour. And even if you could put the amount of hours in, it's actually very draining for you as a person. So again, just to give you an example, I'm doing one-to-one -one coaching and for that I typically charge £200 for the hour. However, again, that's not available or achievable for everybody. So I can also have group coaching sessions. So I work in a group. Now instead of charging £200 for the hour, I can now charge £50 for the hour. However, instead of working one-to-one, -one, I might have 10 people in the group. So suddenly it's become a lot more affordable for the people that want to come to the coaching, as well as instead of me making £200, I'm making £500 for the hour if I've got 10 people in that group. Right. Now, I can also take my content, so taking my live training, bringing down little snippets, and I can create workshops. Example, in the NLP training, maybe we've got a specific section just about dealing with anxiety or depression or uh, motivation. 
procrastination. All of these can be delivered in little workshops. So the workshop might be, let's say it's four hours, five hours. And for the workshop, I might only charge 47 to 97 pounds. And I might even make it for the whole day. It's irrelevant, right? The fact is that when I do one-to-one, -one, I've got very little overheads. When I do group coaching, I've got very little overheads. With the workshop, if I'm doing it face-to-face -face in a venue, then my 47 or 97 pounds over 10 people, so 470 to 970 pounds, probably is not going to make me much profit, and certainly not per hour profit. It's more about covering the costs. But why would I do a workshop then? Well, the workshop leads me into upsells, downsells, cross-sells. I can then invite them to join any of the other programs. So again, as an example, I might do a one-day free introduction to NLP training. So I'm not charging anything at all. And maybe I'm paying for the venue and it's cost me £200 for the day. I could have 100 people there. If I can then go and upsell any of the participants that are there to come and do the live training at £1,200, that's of course where I make my money in the back end. Right. Now, I could also, just as what I'm doing group coaching sessions, I can also take that and do mastermind sessions. So, a little bit of a difference here, or what the difference might be between these. In a group coaching session, I'm coaching the audience. Uh, it might be that we coach individual members. So if there's, let's say there's 10 people in the group, I might coach two people every time we meet. The fact is that the other eight people will stay, still take a lot of benefit away from that. It could also be that it is a very specific or very niche type of coaching so everybody that's coming for the coaching might be specifically within one industry sector and so therefore by coaching a couple of them like I said everybody else gets benefit from it now the difference with the mastermind is with the mastermind I might have probably six to eight people uh, I know the people that have greater numbers in their mastermind I don't think that it really works a mastermind is going to be two to three hours and here, these might be people from different industry sectors. So, example, think business networking, if you've ever been to one of those. So, there might be an accountant, a plumber, a hypnotherapist, whatever they might be, right? And each one of those people will have certain challenges within their business, whether that's finding new clients, whether it's new ways of delivering the service or the, the audience members, whatever the case might be. So with the mastermind, each person gets the opportunity to, and, and probably as the host, I will ask them, what's been your greatest success over the last month, if we're doing these as monthly sessions? What's been your greatest success? What's been your greatest challenge? And what would you like to work on in this particular month session? And each person, it's a round robin, each person gets the opportunity to say what their problem is, then each of the other people get to ask them, get further information, and then also give some advice, which is totally different, of course, to group coaching. In the coaching, we're not giving advice, but yeah, within the mastermind, because all of them are business owners and they all have an understanding of what's going on in their own business, they might have resources within their business or their industry that could benefit somebody in another industry if that makes sense so again I've now got my one-to-one -one coaching so let's use this example of somebody who wants to make five thousand pounds per month instead of uh, wanting to see a hundred people and only charge fifty pounds if I'm charging two hundred pounds for the hour of course I can see less people meaning I've got more time freedom however I can also go do my group coaching. Let's say I've got 10 people in the group at 50 pounds each. That's 500 pounds for the hour. Now I might have 
two or three groups going on at the same time. For the workshop, like I said, there's the idea there is not really to make money. You could if you want, but generally speaking, I want to use that as an upsell or, or utilizing as a platform to sell other services. The mastermind, again, very little overheads. Probably if I'm using something like Zoom, I might have it's about £10 a month for Zoom for both the mastermind, group coaching as well if I'm doing it online, uh, same for one-to-one -one coaching if I'm doing that online. So I've only paid one £10 per month uh, platform fee and I can do many of these and I don't have any other expenses. Now for the mastermind, if I've got, again let's just use a round figure, let's say I've got eight people on the, uh, on the, the, the mastermind group and I'm charging £500, then that's £4,000 coming in, like I said, with very little expenses. Now the mastermind can range. I might do that where I've got uh, eight people, we're doing one session each month over six months, meaning it costs them £500 for six months worth of mastermind sessions. And to be fair, I mean, one business idea is worth thousands. So £500 is actually not a lot of money for them to come and do that. And therefore, I've now already made £4,000 over the eight people. Of course, I can also have a number of mastermind groups. So I might have, like I said, we're meeting once per month. I might have four groups going on at the same time, which means week one, week two, week three, week four, and my £4,000 suddenly has become £16,000 over a six-month period. And if I do that twice per year, of course, that's £32,000 for the year. The online courses, rather than charging £1,200, which is great. That, that's a great way to, uh, to make foster higher income. But I might sell those only at, let's say it was $97 as an example. $97, if I get 100 of those over the year, then... What's that? $197, $9,700, eh? Uh, and then, like I said, of course, with the live trainings, that's going to depend on the amount of people. Now, your live training is probably going to be the place where you've got the highest overheads in comparison to the others. Now, I know I've skipped out membership sites up until now. The beauty with the membership site is I can take all of that content that I've already delivered whether it's a recording of the one-to-one, -one, it's a recording of the group coaching, it can be a recording of the workshops, of the masterminds, or it can be the live training that we've broken down into online courses. And all of that content can be either drip-fed, so they only get a certain amount of information each month, or and one of the things that I personally do, I've got a number of different online courses, and they can either pay £97 to purchase one course, or what they can do is they can pay, let's say, $27 per month, and then they've got access to all of the online content. And of course, this depends again on you and the type of business that you're in. I can create more and more and more content, so therefore keeping them engaged. So if I've got 100 people on my membership site paying me $27 a month, there's an extra $2,700 and I've actually had to do very little work for that because I'm repurposing content that I've already taken from mostly my live training or whatever other content we've created in service deliverables. Now as I said, this can be for anything and this works very well in my business but as a hairdresser, a hairdresser could do the exact same thing. And I'm not a hairdresser, as you can tell, but how you work one-to-one -one with clients. You could potentially do workshops where you bring people in and say to them, okay, this is how you highlight hair. You know, maybe you have a workshop for that. You might have a mastermind where you've got a number of different hairdressers, uh, people that maybe specialize in very specific things in, or in, a, in a beautician market. You can create online courses. So my daughter at the moment, she's quite interested in 
beautician work because my brother-in-law's wife is a beautician and so she's doing some online courses to be able to learn how to use certain things which things to stay away from etc etc so she's already planning her business and she's only 12 years old same thing your membership site maybe uh, you can take all of your content and you can put on a membership site or you might bring in and, and record as you're working with a particular client each month uh, maybe it's a different type of highlight maybe it's a, a specific way of perming I don't know and you drip feed that content onto your membership site same if it was the accountant like I said you you can find a way to bring in what's there seven different ways of generating income just from your content so it all starts with becoming very very clear about your content writing your manual uh, creating PowerPoint slides from that but be very very clear on your content spend your time there and then everything else becomes really easy so I hope you found that useful and if you'd like to find out more then reach out and I'll be happy to explain uh, yeah interesting I think what we need to do now is, is 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 how can we and we've got what half an hour left roughly how could we translate what Mar uh, what to Wayne has just been talking about into our own industry how how would you relate what uh, what Wayne has been talking about into your business and what you well, feel it kind of works I've naturally mostly helped other businesses manage different problems so they need a website they need um, copy they need something on social media that's generally what I've done but I'm focusing a lot more now on copy so I basically help businesses clarify their copy and stay in touch with their clients, customers through emails, the web. Basically, I help business clarify messages and write the right copy that they need to get in touch with mm. clients and gain more clients. So, I mean, this works for me in the sense that I can work one-on-one. -on -one. I can work in a group to help them clarify their message. Um, and I can help businesses actually write the copy they need. So for example, the emails, they need to continually stay in touch with customers because emails is one of the number one ways, you know, to grow your business and to stay in touch with customers. So actually work with them. I could just, I could also do workshops really. I see that potential because I know people in this space who do workshops helping businesses clarify their message. So they bring all the businesses together and they talk through making sure your message is clear, consistent, and all the stuff you go on about on your webpage, on social media, on video, whatever. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could take your workshops as well and you can create that into a full blown course. Yeah. And again, uh, just put that online. And so now you've got online courses. So pretty much most of those things you could do in your industry as well. Yep, yep. I mean, I even see, uh, Frank, you guys even being able to do things like this as well. I think you guys already do uh, workshops. Yeah, yes. Uh, you guys are prime. Accounting, um, solicitors. I see some accountants and solicitors unfortunately mostly from the americans doing some amazing fantastic things if you're on social media everyone thinks you're awesome and you're you know you're the person they need to hire if you're not on social media then maybe you don't know what you're talking about i think that's the psychology people see you well obviously you're confident enough in your services so i can definitely see solicitors and accountants doing some amazing things i've seen it on social media for them i kind of see it's almost easy yeah yes. well by, by now, if, if you know Frank and Mark, you know absolutely everybody should be hiring them because they are awesome. Yeah. Especially if yep. you've got a driving license problem <laughs> or a speeding ticket. <laughs> one, so, of the yeah. things, um, one of the things I, I liked about what you said, Wayne, which if you, if you just relate it, say, to the work I do defending drivers, what, what you're offering, your client market is is not just the it's 1200 pounds or nothing because a lot of people will say mm, got to pay that up front it may be very good there's always a lot of reasons to say 
why you won't spend 1200 pounds and when people are coming out of this covid period they will be looking very carefully yeah. at expenditure because they most businesses will have <laughs> suffered in some way mm -hmm. so the options you're giving of the the mass um workshop as a as a freebie as a taster um is is a loss leader for you but if you get a hundred people in you've only really got to capture five percent ten percent to sell them something mm -hmm. and uh and if you didn't get five or ten people out of a hundred then your marketing in terms of which hundred people you've got is clearly wrong but once you've got them then the flexibility of the packages you're offering i think makes that so attractive because people will look and say do you know what I had that free session that was decent to the guy i can now join a group for 50 pounds no one's gonna blanch at paying 50 pounds so if you've got 10 of them from the hundred and you spent 200 you've got 500 you've made three and you could upsell so what one of the things that i'm looking at doing in in just the work i do is and sometimes i think i give too much away so we get a lot of online inquiries so a lot of people will email or come to us via the website or come to me direct i get a lot of work through linkedin and and through um connections and then they tell you the problem and I, I know what the solution is, and I maybe give them an hour, and I tell them exactly what the path would be to core and to, and to getting them the best outcome. And I give them that for nothing. Mm. Now, if you add up how many inquiries I deal with like that in a year, that is a lot of potentially chargeable time yeah. now if i hook them and convert them i'll still get a fee but i can't get those hours back and what i'm looking at doing is trying to and and all of my potential clients wouldn't wear this but a lot would is having a very short telephone conversation and then saying look for x whether it was 199 pounds because it's attractive or 200 pounds plus fat or whatever i will have a longer chat with you an hour chat on zoom or whatever and i will give you a full written advice as to what your options are what the outcomes are and if you then want to hire me that either gets offset against the advocacy fee or the advocacy fee is a separate add-on now if I only, let's say I do a hundred free hour advices and let's say some of them become clients and I only converted 20 of them to pay the 200 pound an hour. My maths is, is it not exist, but, oh, but, there, but there's a lump of money that I didn't earn having given that time away. And that's where I think what you've said is so powerful. Absolutely because there are ways of making money from the the people who are already contacting you who are units to be blunt of potential income there are there are plenty of ways of generating income from them other than doing the 1200 pound job yeah. yes possibly uh, and i don't know specifically how it will sit within your practice a workshop could be specific with the driving offenses. It could be specific to conveyancing. It could be yep. whatever, right? Funeral plans or I don't know, whatever. Uh, now, from an online point of view, you know, almost like a lot of companies have their introduction videos. So you could take something like that, uh, delve down a little bit more, Give more specific information, but still not the entire, because, because each uh, case is going to have its own nuances, mm. obviously. So you're giving them some, some uh, big picture information, and that can then be a, uh, a workshop, right? Which can be easily converted then. Mm. So you're spending one hour 
rather than the 100 hours. Yeah. Rather have 100 people yeah. come to you at once. The, my title sums it up, uh, the franchise specialist. So I specialize in franchising. So mainly both sides of it, franchisors and franchisees, but the majority of my clients are franchi or potential franchisors. Okay. People who are running a business and they want to franchise the business, basically. Yep. Um, so, yeah, just to go back to what uh, Wayne was saying, I've done all those things, Wayne, like you. Um, I've done workshops where I've had people and, and it's, you know, I've not made any money from the workshops. I've done workshops for franchising, um, you know, people coming along and, um, giving them a lot of information. And again, going back to what you were saying, um, I, I give away a lot of free information. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, people ring me up and I've spent an hour on the phone with somebody talking to them, which I try not to do, but you know, sometimes it, it's, it's the best way of doing things. And, you know, without quoting too many numbers, I, I have what I call a seven step strategy, which basically is what, a company needs to do before they before they start recruiting and that seven step strategy goes through things like your business model your finance model your, your operations manual your training manual your franchise agreement and so on yeah and, and what i do when people inquire and come to see me or ring me up and i'll, I'll quite happily send them a brief of that seven step strategy which lists basically what's involved in it yeah. and I charge roughly 12,000 quid to do that seven step strategy. And it works out for me roughly at about 300 pound an hour. So, because for me, a lot of it is repeat, repeat, repeat. What changes is the, is the, the different types of businesses because obviously I've got to change various, you know, a, a, a van based franchise is totally different from a, a coffee shop franchise. But basically for me, it's just about changing the, the, the wording in the agreements or the operations manuals or whatever. Some companies will say to me when they look at the seven step strategy, oh, we've got an operations manual, so we don't need that bit. And, you know, I've come across them as well. Where some of them, it's been quite true. So I've adapted my cost. I've cut the cost out for that. I've said, okay, we'll take, take a bit out of that. Others, when I've gone to see them and seen their operations manual, they <laughs> think, you know, Right. No, you haven't got the operations manual you think you have, but you know, in in reality, it's, it's not it's not practical. So there's a lot of ups and downs, and you know, if, if franchising is a specific market, and what um, the, the other thing that I've done over the last five years or so is once once I've done those seven step strategies, and and to give you an idea. I convert roughly 20% of my inquiries. Wow. wow. Roughly 20%. Um, and once I've done that seven step strategy, the last bit of it is telling them how to recruit franchisees, the best way to recruit for their type of business. And once I've got to that stage, and I, I tell them this right at the beginning, then they have the option of using me to do the recruitment, to follow up the recruitment, uh, or do it themselves and some of them use me so that's an additional income coming in because basically I have a system set up where they advertise on a, a site like Franchise Direct they pay for that and the inquiries come through to me mm -hmm. I follow up the inquiries with emails and phone calls and if we sign somebody up I get a percentage of the franchise fee so that's where the ongoing business comes mm -hmm. in um, I'm, I'm in the process of setting up at the moment. Again, going back to what Wayne said, it's mainly because, um, you know, I've always been a person to person, you know, face to face people, but business is changing. And also because of my age, you know, I, I want to put, I'm, I'm in the process of putting online courses. That seven step strategy and, and the books I've written. I can convert them into an online course. Yeah. Yep. Stick, stick them on Udemy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's no, I will put them on Udemy. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Lynn. And, uh, you know, let's talk about 
the platform separately. But yeah, don't put them on Udemy. Right, okay. <laughs> Where would you put them then? No. Okay. Uh, so, can I, can I just... I'll talk to you about that later. I'll talk to you about that later. Yeah, I'll put in for one moment. What I'd like to do, because we've only got a quarter of an hour left, could we bring Mark in? Uh, mm -hmm. Because I think all of us are in a position to do a quarter of an hour talk about our way forward, as Wayne has just done. It's created a lot of interest, a lot of talk. So, Mark, would you, how do you envisage uh, what his master's voice has just said? I think the, the comments that have been made so far I find really interesting. I've, I've, I've made notes on, um, on what everybody has said, some very pertinent points. Um, you know, in terms of upselling, obviously from our perspective, that's one of the things that we, we are able to do. Perhaps I don't do it as well as I should do, but there's an awful lot of upselling involved within the, uh, the accountancy industry. Um, clients will come along and simply want, for example, a set of accounts doing but it's then, I wouldn't say easy, but the penny drops soon drops when they realize how much of a hassle the bookkeeping side can be, or some clients will try and do their own tax return and realize that actually it's not cost effective, both from a ta point of time spent trying to do it, and also the, the tax reliefs that they fail to claim. Um, and a comment that, that Frank made, which, has absolutely fascinated me to be honest and it's so so simple and I've never it's, the pen has never dropped with me is the the initial meetings that you have with clients which obviously from our perspective that happens on a regular basis we'll have clients either phoning us emailing us or even actually walking in off the street because of where we are um, wanting a meeting to discuss whether they can come on board as a client and I am very, very guilty of, in those initial meetings, giving them far, far too much information. Um, and some of them are cute enough to realize that they'll just keep prodding and probing and will extract the information out of you. Yes. And, I, and I'm not very good at saying, well, you'll need to pay for that. Well, you'll need to pay for that because that's information that, you know, I've, I've trained for how many years to, to have in my head. But I love the concept that Frank said, which is, okay, we'll have a further conversation. I'll charge you X amount of pounds, but if you come on board as a client, I'll discount that off your fees. I think that's absolutely fabulous. I, I, why that has never dawned on me is beyond me. And I think after this meeting, I'm going to go away and give myself a good old slap because of it. Um, but it, it, it's... It's the ability to upsell. I love the idea of social media and YouTube, but I've just made a few notes about perhaps trying to do, say, 60-second six, sound bites on a, a topical issue. Um, one of my specialist areas is property tax, and I could do a multitude of YouTube 60-second videos uh, or something along those lines, workshops, just to dangle a carrot in front of people. Oh, my God, you'd be so popular. He did, uh, <laughs> he did that property thing. Oh my God! I know he would kill. Now just on, on that, that, Mark, if oh. you if you do your recording, so the same video that I recorded, you can go and upload to all the different sites. Yeah. Yeah. But upload it to YouTube. You upload it to Facebook, to LinkedIn, to uh, uh, Instagram, to all of these things. Uh, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to this, Wayne. I mean, I know what they are, but, yeah. you know, even my business partner, Richard Brown, he talks about Twitter. Then the only thing I know about Twitter is there's something called Twitter. <laughs> right. Now, um, now to, uh, so you to, uh, to bear in mind, just as a bit of information, is upload, them, upload the same video individually to each platform. Mm. Don't just upload to YouTube and paste the YouTube link into every platform because the platforms like to keep people on their site. So therefore, upload the video to the <laughs> platforms. Yeah. Okay. Plus, you can, make, you can make one little video and turn that little video into little bits yes. of content. You put little quotes, little yeah. another video for another platform. You can turn it into a lot, a little article for your website. Um, that one thing, you can really stretch it out into little bits of content. Um, 
yes, I just think that's, I was thinking for a while of just focusing on working for accountants because you have so much that people don't know. I mean, like I was saying, taxes, I have been part of a coaching program for property lately. And those property tax things, I mean, there's a whole thing on it. The, the guy, they yes. charge, he charges like 2,000 pounds for you to come for one, two days mm. Mm. for wealth through pro- property. And that involves taxes and everything. So just that shows you how much money yeah. is in it. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Mm. I, think, I think where we are now is, I think for the first time in the last three weeks since we've been running these, we've all actually pinned our ears back and realized the value of the six of us. There's a few more of us, but the value of what we've all got stuck in our heads. Mm. Um, it goes back, I suppose, to the old days of the networking of BNI, uh, of the networking that I ran and the, and the CPE in that we, we were involved in. But the fact of the matter is, that was face to face with people in a room we are not and will not have that luxury i don't think for a minimum of of the next six months i think we have got to really now say to ourselves don't let's kid ourselves we're not going to be able to get out and meet all of these people that we'd like to so how do we do it you can go on 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 zoom and if you don't speak for more than 40 minutes you get it free but if you pay now, in the last few months, Zoom have now brought on to the back of it, and I need to look into this, a webinar system where you can actually now start using your own webinars on the back of Zoom. So many people have gone onto it. So therefore, yep. one of the things we've got to look at, I think, is saying, right, how do we do it? Wayne has told me a lot, and, and, and Vona is always telling me stuff. But the fact of the matter is, I've got far too many followers on far too many things that are doing absolutely nothing for me or me for them. So we've also got to look at cleaning up the dead wood. I use that word metaphorically, by the way. But what I'm trying to say is, why don't we all go back to square one and say to ourselves, right, this is a new ball game we're in. We're just starting out now because we can't get out to see clients as easily. Let's create ourselves around one area and and, 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 and just work on that and start talking to people face to face this way. Mm. One of the things I always say to somebody when they come on to me and and they want to chat and they're on the phone or they send me an email uh, is look, I'm sorry, I need to, putting it quite bluntly, I need to see the whites of your eyes when I'm talking to you. I want to see if you are taking notice. I want to see if you're shaking your head like this. You know, what was the famous one uh, that we used to see in networking? I can't remember the person who used to do it now. But he'd turn around and say, that's yes, that's no, and that I couldn't care less. I'm trying to remember who used to say that now. Pardon? Yeah, I use that in my training, in my courses as well. I say, yes, but, no, who gives but, it and let's go for food. But this is it. But now we're in this opportunity. We don't know when they speak to us on the phone who the devil they are, do we? But on Zoom we do because we can see them. That's the way I feel. So I'm going to shut up now. And, and does anybody want to ask any other questions to anybody else? But I really have enjoyed this session today. <laughs> It's simply, remember, it's, it's simply just information that uh, maybe something that you do in your business that might help other people. And uh, then the, the wider audience that gets to see these videos, because uh, I certainly host them on my uh, YouTube channel, and, and I would suggest you, know, you, you post them out as well. Uh, but the wider audience then potentially has the opportunity to come back to you and say, hey, you know what, I, I want to find out more about what you do. Uh, I'm working on um, very early stages of it, but I got a download from somebody which is who I know and trust, which is very good. And I'm working on, because I've got the time to do it, but 
I don't want to lose the time when we're back to normality on uh, a LinkedIn business strategy. And, and there are 10 steps to work through on it. And I'm finding that incredibly useful because LinkedIn works. Since I changed my profile to being a niche driving offense solicitor, from the day I did that, literally from the day I did that, it started directly generating paying work. So that's an important platform for me. I don't mind um, if, you, if you think that's interesting, going through the key stages of that strategy and talking yeah. about how I use that platform. That would Definitely. Be, yeah, that, that would, would be, be interesting. Brilliant. Enough, right? yeah. That would be brilliant. So if you are okay to do that next week, yeah, uh, for, that's for, fine. You know, just for 15 minutes and, yeah. and possibly follow it up with any paperwork you want to email around. Sure. Uh, that would be absolutely great. It really would. One of the things that, uh, and, and I won't say, one of the things that I've actually been doing over the last fortnight, when people sign into my website to receive, uh, they get nine uh, emails over a course of about a month. Now, believe it or believe it not, as positive as I am, it was only a fortnight ago that I actually realized how poor the writing was, what I was sending out. So I've listened to the MP3s on five of them now, and I've actually looked at them again, listened to them several times, and then written more onto the actual paperwork. What I'm trying to say is, some things that we've done in the past, have we actually upgraded it? Have we looked at it? Have we looked at what we've done in the past? and upgraded it. Now I've done this and I'm quite pleased. And all of a sudden I've realized that I'm missing out on certain areas. One, as I'm writing it, how, how do I put my MP3s onto my website so people can click into them and download them? A simple thing, I mentioned SWOT analysis in several of the ones that I've done so far. But what I haven't done or didn't do, I hadn't got a link of my three page, four page SWOT analysis that I'd written on the website for people to download. Yeah. And it's, it's these tiny, tiny, tiny things that we've forgotten. And I think that's what is, that's what's beautiful because fire in our bellies is just what we need because every one of us have got small fires in our bellies. And I love getting hold of the person as a mentee and changing that into a raging inferno. And that's what I love doing with people. So I'm gonna shut up at that point, And I'm going to say, thank you very much for attending. All the best. Have, and a, lovely have, a, lo have a lovely weekend and take care.